Hell yeah, guys, what's up? This is Curse Pike. My friends call me Big C. I'm back again, guys, and today we got a special topic. It's a topic I want to talk about. It's a big deal right now. A lot of the gamers, gameplay community, and the developers are weighing in on this. And in particular, drum roll, day one game reviews. First off, what are your opinion about day one game reviews? Because here's the thing. The faster a website gets a review out, the more search engine results they're going to get in general. This is an overstatement and this is a generalization. I get that. But if you're the first one out with a review, you get the lion's share of the clicks, at least up front from, from Google. So here's the problem. These sites that are producing um, reviews within an hour or two of a release, they're not really that good of reviews in theory because they haven't had a chance to play the game. Let's take for example, I don't know, Destiny. You know what, they got lots and lots of hundreds of hours of content. Although, in the, the website's defense, the first four hours are pretty cool, but the rest, you know, a lot of people are saying it's kind of just doing the same thing over and over again. But no, joking aside, think about a game like World of Warcraft, uh, whatever that is, the new expansion, the Draenor, I'm an orc. Uh, I built a garrison and I grew a beard and I threw away my social life and <laughs> whatever it's called, Warlords of Draenor, that's the one. <laughs> Guys, that game comes out, that game's got like, I don't know, three or four weeks of content in theory, right? If you're a casual gamer, it's going to take you a few weeks to get through all the new stuff, all the new zones, try out the new equipment, get used to all the new systems, yada, yada, yada. You get my point. But here's the thing, a game site releases a, a review in three hours. Google, because it can't fact check, it doesn't have the ability to fact check or, you know, check the validity of these reviews really. Like they could check if a website's legit, but they can't go through an individual review. They will actually, in theory, send signals out saying, hey, there's a new review. It goes up, it gets search engine priority, and these sites are now getting views. They're getting views, giving out reviews, and these reviews impact people's decisions to buy games and they haven't had a chance to actually play the game. Now, there are notable exceptions. For example, if, a, if um, a game site, for example, is given a game in advance so they can actually play through the whole damn thing, or at least a large portion of it, and give a fair and reasoned review, that's one thing. But when you got a, you know, kind of fly-by-night site that doesn't have that sort of access, or an upstart site, maybe you have one, and this is totally legit, but you can't get the review, you can't get the game right away, you post the review or somebody else posts a review, posts their opinion, and bang, you know what? You can actually sink or swim a site or a game based on that alone, pardon me. So what's your opinion on day one game reviews in that type of circumstance? Also, are developers, should they be given like a few day leeway so that you know they're, when they release the game, if it comes with bugs and it's got some issues, you know, sometimes where the servers aren't entirely tweak. You know what? You give it a couple days and all of a sudden that stuff is figured out. No problem. Let's take World of Warcraft for example and we'll contrast that to like Drive Club or whatever the hell that was for PlayStation 4. World of Warcraft, when it released, the new patch released, or the new, not new patch, nah, um, <coughs> the new expansion released, that game came out right quick. They had a whole bunch of issues. In the first 48 hours, they had issues, but we knew it would have issues. They've got hundreds of servers with millions of players. They got a lot of balls to juggle. <laughs> and uh, anyways, guys, do you give them a pass? Should a review that comes out in the first day that says, this game's terrible, I can't connect, blah, 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 which is, which is a real complaint, should that be given a, a, a review? Should that be included into Metacritic, maybe? I don't know. Um, uh, that's one of my arguments. The other one is, and I'm still trying to think about it, is Drive Club. That game is a lot different. World of Warcraft sorted their stuff out generally within the, like 48 to, to 96 hours and five free days of gameplay were given out. So, that, so they remedied it. But Drive Club for the PlayStation 4 has been a gong show. It's been out like almost four weeks now, I think, and they still don't have it together. Their servers are down. It's not working. People paid money. This is a PlayStation 4 exclusive that people were banking on as a PS4 console killer, blah, 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 and they still can't get it together. They shouldn't be given a pass. But where do you draw the line, guys? What do you do? Anyways, that's enough of a rant for this because we're gonna talk about this topic again, but please weigh in on your opinions. What websites, do you go to a couple websites that you trust? I know the big guys, the IGNs, the GameSpots, the yada, 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 but do you have like a, a niche site that you know that you trust is gonna give it a good review? It's actually gonna play the game? 
not just try and steal uh, steal uh, search engine optimization and, and, and search use and search hits because of, you know, releasing a game review early. What do you guys think? Weigh in on this guy. This is your boy Big C. I'm going to be back and I'm going to be taking on this topic again. This is, check it out.